I'm Jose Wilson. I'm a math teacher at IS52 in Wood Washington Heights, and I've been doing this now for nine years. Um, we're about to close out the school year, and I'd like to talk a little bit about my background and why it matters for so many uh, teachers of color, especially male teachers of color, to be, to be classroom teachers. I grew up in the Lower East Side, which was predominantly Jewish until uh, about the late 70s to the early 80s when you had an influx of Puerto Ricans, Blacks, um, even Dominicans and Asians all coming into this neighborhood that we would call the Lower East Side. Um, at some point, I started to notice that um, even though there wasn't that much diversity as far as um, the teaching staff, there was a lot of diversity of thought within my public school. So PS140, super diverse in terms of the student population. And the teachers that we had were predominantly Jewish, but they embraced a lot of cultures and they took us out to different places and they showed us a lot of experiences. Uh, fast forward to um, high school, I didn't necessarily get that experience when I went into a predominantly white school and I started to see that there was a slight difference with how I was treated uh, with some teachers versus how I was treated with other teachers. Some were very accepting, some were not as accepting. And I could have used a little bit more, um, I guess, diversity and understanding when I became a student in that high school. Um, uh, somewhere along the line, when I went to college, Syracuse University, I really started getting involved in diversity issues, especially around affinity groups like La Lucha, which was our undergraduate um, Latino organization. We also had SAS, the Student African American Society. I became very involved with that, along with Asia, our Asian um, organization as well. A lot of these different organizations that I started to latch onto and started learning about histories and really getting involved with uh, what, what it meant to be of color in this country. And this, this is the only time when I really got to soak in 76%, like 80% of the things that I knew about my own background and the people that I knew from around me. Having said that, I became a teacher because I often saw uh, the need for people of color to become uh, more involved in the education system. What I, may, what I mean by that is oftentimes we um, forget that the kids that we see in front of us are the adults that are going to shape our futures. And if we continue to disregard uh, the adults of color and yet you know, say, oh, we are doing this for the kids, then there's an obvious disconnect there. As someone who's a teacher of color, a male teacher of color, I bring a certain perspective that maybe others don't bring. Obviously, uh, skin color or phenotype aren't the only things that matter when it comes to education. You, you obviously have to have that passion. You have to have a drive. You have to have a voice. You have to get in there and really care about the kids. And I think it, it matters even more when you are different from the kids that you are teaching. But for, for me, as a male of color coming into the classroom as a teacher, I bring in a certain perspective that says, hey, I've sat where you are sitting now, and I can help bridge that gap, not just for the students, but also for my fellow staff members who may or may not be from the same background as me. Uh, so I often see this necessity for us to bring up that 2 to 3 percent of teachers of color, and I'm talking about all teachers of color, including um, Asian Native American, as well as Black and Latino male teachers of color, we're about 3% of the entire teaching force. And that needs to be bumped up just a bit. And I, I, mean that, I mean that to say that if we can get that number bumped up to even like 10, 20%, you'd see a shift, I think, in achievement, especially in the way that we uh, perceive our students of color and how they're able to achieve in our, in our schools. Until then, though, we still need to keep our focus in on making sure that issues of race and diversity and gender keep coming to the fore. How do we become more passionate? How do we become more inclusive of everyone? And then there's always the question, too, about how do we bridge the gap uh, in the meantime? Obviously, right now, we have a smaller percentage of uh, people of color that are teaching. I think we're at 18 percent uh, women and men of color in the teaching profession. So until we bridge that gap, what's gonna happen with the other uh, big percentage of folks who 
consider themselves white. Well, there's a couple of things there, right? Number one, it's a really strange dynamic because maybe you're not comfortable coming into a class where uh, everybody who's in front of you is of a different uh, background or of a different ethnicity. But then how then do you uh, double down on your passion? How do you uh, work to be more inclusive, more creative, uh, get yourself out there more? And I think people of color are often looking for people who at the very least see them as people and not as just people that they need to save, but more as people that, you know, th that will help them grow. And the, the most successful teachers that I've seen, including ones that have taught me, saw me as somebody who had a lot of potential and continued to work to help my potential grow. And once you have that, that high expectation that, yes, I'm not going to give up on you, but you have to work hard and you have to meet me at least halfway, if not more so, um, that's when it, it starts to, you know, transcend issues of race and class. But until you've done that, I think, you know, you're still going to have to deal with these issues of race, class, and gender. You'll always have to deal with that. But for so many uh, white teachers who always ask me, but Jose, I'm not of, you know, I'm not of color. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Um, the first thing I always suggest to them is, look inside yourself, be more reflective, and really consider how do you bridge that gap. Obviously, I can tell you, oh, go get my book. This is not a test. It's wonderful. I can always do that. And, you know, there's so many resources in there to begin with. There are stories for there for you to grab, grasp onto. And hopefully, you know, you're able to read it and really get a sense of what I'm talking about. But until then, uh, maybe your best chance at doing the best possible job is to be as passionate as possible about your job. And I think once you've done that, then regardless of race, I think people start seeing you as somebody who wants to build upon the person that they are, build upon the child that they are. So then by the time that they become me, then I get to pass those fevers on forward.